The instant our perturber lands on the table, it begins skittering back and forth like a drunken sailor. Then it starts slamming into the other tops, knocking them out of their celestial sweet spots. In very little time, our table becomes a picture of chaos as tops fly off every edge. Now let's assume that our perturber, which wreaked havoc on our tabletop, and Planet X are one and the same. If this is the case, it stands to reason that Planet X has already perturbed our Sun, and most if not all of the other major planets in our solar system. To see if this is possible, let's briefly discuss a topic we're all familiar with, global warming. In 2001, I joined fellow researchers in the conclusion that global warming is real and that it is primarily caused by solar activity. Human pollution, which is considerable, only plays an aggravating secondary role. When we released our findings, we were immediately ridiculed. I suppose this is why I'm so fond of John Couch Adams. He kept on doing his thing and was fortunate enough to see some of his theories become scientific fact. In the same vein, our 2001 global warming findings have been recently validated as well. According to scientists based at the Institute for Astronomy in Zurich, our sun is more violent now than at any time in the last 1,000 years. Another study by Dutch meteorologists tells us that temperature increases of the last 60 years are the largest in this same period of time. Now here's the kicker. That was the good news. The bad news is that this trend will continue upward through the next 11-year solar maximum. According to NASA, the next solar maximum, which starts in 2007, will reach its peak in 2012. At that point, it is estimated to be half again worse than the last, and many feel that's a rather conservative estimate. Why is that? Prior to this last solar maximum, the highest catastrophic solar flare category was X. However, during this last solar maximum, a whole new catastrophic Y category had to be created. So let's now put this into a larger context. Up to now, we've looked at how the sun has become more violent and how this increased solar activity became the principal engine of global warming for the Earth. So does this also mean that the other planets in our solar system are evidencing similar surface perturbations? According to several prestigious observatories, this is exactly what's happening. For example, recent surface warming on Mars and Pluto was so severe that similar events on Earth would have caused an extinction-level event. In fact, every planet in our system is evidencing some form of surface perturbation. These range from radical climate and weather changes to the new radio and X-ray emissions that are popping up everywhere. To put this in context, imagine that you're standing in the middle of a dark theater. At first, everything is cool and quiet. Then, without warning, a lighting technician begins switching on every bank of lights in the house. That, in a manner of speaking, is what our solar system is doing, because it's showtime, folks. And at the top of the bill is none other than our grand old perturber, Planet X. Perhaps now would be a good time to take a closer look at what Planet X could be and what it could do to us. Earlier, we first imagined the ecliptic as a laser beam extending from the center of the sun out to the constellations of the zodiac. Along that beam, the planets of our solar system orbit our sun in the celestial sweet spot of the Kozai mechanism. With this orderly and predictable vision in mind, let's now investigate two rather interesting aspects of the precession of the equinoxes. In the everyday life sense, the precession of the equinoxes determines where we'll find the North Star at night, when to put snow tires on the car, and when to smear on the suntan lotion. For those of you who can remember watching Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon back in 1969, you might also remember the Age of Aquarius by the Fifth Dimension. It was a catchy, upbeat song that promised a more peaceful world in the coming Age of Aquarius. This will happen when the sun is directly in between the Earth 
and the constellation of Aquarius. And interestingly enough, it is also part of the precession of the equinoxes. So what does the age of Aquarius have to do with Planet X? Plenty, as you'll soon see. But first, let's briefly revisit the idea that Planet X could be an unborn companion to our own sun, or what astronomers call a brown dwarf. What is the difference between a sun like our own and a brown dwarf? A brown dwarf is an unborn sun that lacks the mass necessary to sustain nuclear fusion. This is why a brown dwarf may be quite visible when it is young, but with age it will come to resemble a dusty bed of red-hot embers. Humankind has long believed that there is only one sun in our solar system. So what are the chances that we live in a binary solar system with two suns? Well, according to NASA, the chance of that happening is better than 80%. Ergo, to continue believing that we live in a solar system with only one sun, we must also view ourselves as the exception to the rule, and not the other way around. Okay, so what does all of this binary solar system stuff have to do with the precession of the equinoxes in the coming age of Aquarius? Well, here it is. The Earth is not moving forward through the zodiac into Aquarius, but rather, we're sliding backwards into it. This is all fine and good, but what's really interesting is that we're sliding backwards into Aquarius at an ever-increasing speed. This curious fact explains why astronomers and astrologers must use something called precession compensation to factor in this ever-changing difference. It also begs two very obvious questions. Given that astronomers recently demoted Pluto to a minor planet, is it wise of us to blindly cling to the old belief that we only have one sun? And if so, what could possibly be causing our planet to move backwards through the zodiac at an ever-increasing speed? Before you paint these questions as being trivial, please consider the following experiment. If you want to boil a frog alive without him noticing it, start by putting him in a pot of cold water. Then very, very, very slowly heat the water to a boil. If you do it right, the frog will keep adjusting to the water temperature increases until it is literally cooked in its own juices. Likewise, could the same be happening to us? Ask yourself, are we oblivious to the possible danger of Planet X because it is happening slowly enough for us to keep adjusting to it? Perhaps this is why humanity has always held a deep respect for prophecy and folklore. Not because they are scientifically precise, but rather because they offer us harbinger signs of future dangers. This is why Prophecy and folklore are so vital to human survival. They tell us when to jump out of the pot so that we're not boiled alive by our own comfort mechanisms. With regard to Planet X, the prophecies of the Colburn Bible, Nostradamus, Mother Shipton, and the Mayans are all giving us the same warning. Get out of the pot. With that in mind, Let's take a closer look at those warnings.